All right. Good evening, everybody. Prayerfully, you all are doing great and excited during these uh, times that we are in. Uh, you know, we're over the hump, if you say, or over the curve, uh, as we've all talked and uh, heard mentioned on the news many, many times. So we're blessed. Uh, the reason why I say that is we are able to worship together for the first time in many weeks starting this Sunday, and we are just so blessed to be able to worship with you all. Um, kind of got some things. I want to go over that really quick tonight. Um, starting Sunday, we are going to have two services, 9 and 1030, uh, just like we always have done. Nothing is going to be any different. However, uh, we are going to be at, per city guidelines, 50% capacity, all right? So what does that mean to you? That means when you come in, every other pew is going to be available for seating. Uh, if you live in the same household, you all just pile in and cram in uh, to a pew. If you don't, we're going to try to separate you as much as we possibly can, and uh, we want to um, follow the guidelines and do the best we can to uh, do what we've been asked to do. Uh, along with those lines, we are not going to have any child care or nursery services on Sunday. It's Mother's Day anyway, so we typically don't do that. Uh, and what a blessing it's going to be, right? We get to celebrate moms on our first service back. So we are really, really excited about it. Um, before I go on, I wanted to mention my shirt. You know, I'm always talking about vibes and, and how I don't understand when someone says, send me the vibes or the good vibes. So uh, we, through Jackie and Brian, I am sending you good vibes. Uh, if you can see that right here, I'm trying to step out of the way. And uh, it says, good vibes only. So it was a joke. They got it for me. And I love it. Thank you, Jackie and Brian. Uh, first time I've ever been able to wear it. It things works good. Uh, kind of relaxed today. I've had a crazy busy day with uh, some unexpected things that happened uh, first thing this morning. But uh, we are here to worship the Lord through Bible study. And what a blessing it is. So along with that, uh, we are not going to do any Wednesday services until possibly 520. All right. That's two more Wednesdays. So no services until 520. The reason why uh, the teachers and I are working through some things as far as seating goes with the children um, and those types of things. We're not going to do any community meals for a little while, too, uh, until we're back to normal. Uh, we just want to stay ahead of everything, and we want to be honorable and do what's best. And so, uh, again... Um, ready to rock. The church has been sanitized and ready to go for everybody. So come on in on Sunday, this Sunday, 9 or 1030. Again, 50% capacity. If you typically come to the 1030 service, um, we'd like for you, if at all possible, to come to the first service. We typically have a little more room uh, on the nine o'clock service, but uh, either way, we just want you to worship and we're going to do the best we can to accommodate everyone and everybody. And lastly, um, moms, when you come, you get a free gift. It's going to be a nice one, too. I can promise you that. Uh, Christy's partnered with a very small business owner who uh, you all may know and love together uh, with us as well, uh, Sydney. And uh, she's got some special jewelry for you all when you come in, and uh, provided by the church. And so we're going to be blessed to do that. Um, next up, before we go to the Lord in prayer, we've had some prayer requests. And if you're following along with us on Facebook and social media, we've had some deaths take place, uh, not within the church, but family members of the church, some unexpected things. We've still got some sickness, and we've got some grieving going on, and um, just really pay attention to our Facebook page. That's where we post a lot of our prayer requests and what we have been doing as we haven't been able to gather together and put them together on a bulletin. So, you know, we, uh, we just want to pray and lift each other up, and if you have a request, please throw it on here, direct message me, or text me, whatever's easiest. Uh, we want to pray for you. That's, we strive to be a praying little church, and that's what we want to do. So that being said, tonight our, in, our topic is demons and angels. Now, why'd you pick that? Well, we typically talk about that once a year, and uh, y'all have been a little quiet, all right, with the uh, questions and things. So hopefully trying to stir uh, some things up for you as we, uh, as we go in tonight. So remember, there's only... There's no such thing as a dumb question, only the ones that's not asked. So put it out there. And if you don't feel comfortable or you don't want it being uh, on social media, you can text. I'll actually grab my phone and you can text me direct or Christy and uh, direct message, Facebook, whatever. And uh, we'll do our best to get those questions answered. So without further ado, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come together and Lord, we just praise you so much. 
We thank you, Father, for everything. And just what an amazing time it is that we can be together, but yet be apart. You know, Father, it, it's amazing, and it's just like what you do with us. Your Holy Spirit it resides within each and every one of us. And it's amazing how you can do that. I ask that you bring us together tonight during this time of study, that you anoint me, Father, from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. May you be glorified and lifted up on high. Most importantly, I pray, Lord, that we generate some questions and, and that we get some interest in this study. Father, as we have a few more weeks before we can interactively come together once again, and uh, like our Bible studies always are. Lord, we know you're going to bless us in faith. We thank you for all the good things. And in Jesus' name, everybody said amen. All right, so I'm going to grab my phone in case there's a question. So what we're going to talk about is demons and angels. Demons and angels. Now, it's pretty interesting because the Bible talks quite a bit about those two subjects, but not as much as you think. And if you're like me and you watch TV or movies, right, uh, you know the world is fascinated, as are we as Christians, with angels and with demons, it seems like. Um, you know, we allow what we don't know to take place in our supposition, okay? We suppose a lot of things when it comes to angels because the Bible's kind of quiet on it, all right? But we are going to dive into that a little bit today. Um, but what I want to point out is that what the Bible says is not so much what popular opinion is, okay? For instance, if you've ever bought a bag or a box, whatever, of Charmin tissue, all right, years ago. You've got the little angels on there, right? And they're just squeezing that little toilet paper, and oh, it's so soft, right? There's no such thing that the Bible talks about as far as a little baby angels, right? As far as, uh, uh, you know, little cherubs with diapers floating around up there. That's not what angels are, and we're going to dive into that tonight. We watch movies. We watch TV shows. And we see these great big things, and sometimes they can be biblically accurate, and sometimes they're so far off, it makes no sense whatsoever. But again, we try to use supposition to make up for what we don't know. And when we do that, we can have the wrong idea of what's going on. Okay, We can have the wrong idea or have wrong um, expectations, if you will, sometimes. Now, I know dealing, when you uh, deal with death, a lot of times... When, when a loved one passes, someone will say, well, God needed another angel. Now, again, in that time, I don't dare argue that point. But I want you tonight during our Bible study to realize that when one person passes from this earth and is a Christian, is a Christ follower, they go to heaven. They do not turn into an angel. All right? We've got to know that straight up and uh, right off the bat. Our loved ones do not become angels in heaven. They are there residing in the streets. They are there um, doing whatever Jesus has them doing for us in preparation. And um, it's important we know that, all right? It's very important that we know and, and understand that. Um, I want to read you a verse, and I'm actually, believe it or not, reading out of the English Standard Version tonight. And it's a passage I'm sure you've heard lots and lots of times. And is this, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. You see, every battle we have here on earth is typically, most of the time, other than what nature, the results of our dumb decisions, and going against the forces of evil is what we fight against, okay? Don't get it mixed up that God is out to punish you, all right? I mean, I, I know people, and again, I've talked about this several weeks ago too, that somebody will say, well, I messed up, so, so now I'm going to get a flat tire. Or, Boy, I shouldn't have said that yesterday. Now I'm going to get this. God doesn't work that way, okay? Now, he will put us through trials. Those types of things will happen, but most of the time... We are wrestling with those of the demonic world, if you will. Um, many, many times, and you know this if you've read your Bible any at all, Satan will love to throw a roadblock at your way. He will love to throw a roadblock at you. All right, He puts it in our way to stumble us. 
we're going to read tonight, and I'm sure you're familiar with it, where Satan had and an angel wrestled for three weeks before this particular angel was able to deliver a message to one of God's prophets. So it, it's amazing, and we don't think about it as much because, again, we, we have these misconceptions, these suppositions of what angelic and demonic forces are. And I want to hit on a couple points tonight, maybe something you've never thought about. Um, again, I believe we give Satan and demons too much credit. Many times we give them much uh, more authority than what they actually have. And we do that out of ignorance, out of not knowing, out of watching movies and trying to put that in us, uh, in ourselves, in the Christian life. And I, I want to say this, Hollywood most of the time does not get what the Bible has to say correct. All right. They're, remember, they're there to sell tickets. They are there to, to, to that off factor, to get you locked in, to get you in there and buying that popcorn and candy and all that good stuff. So what we have to go by is the Bible, and that has to be the only thing that we deal with when it comes to some of these questions. Sure, we can use our imaginations and we can use this and that, but, but let's not get too caught up with it, right? If, if the Bible doesn't talk about it for a reason, it may not be that important. Many times we take what's important, and you know this, sharing the gospel, studying the Bible, and putting it into action. We take that and put it to the side, and we're just concentrated on the demonic, or we're concentrated on, 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 on the, the angels and, and on all these things that, honestly, doesn't matter. We need to focus and be concentrated on what we can do to make a difference, to be the hands and feet of Jesus. I'm going to push that aside. I'm done with that, okay? But you know where I'm going. All right. Think about it this way. I want you to think about it this way. We know that in life, we as Christ followers, as Christians, we wrestle against the results of our dumb decisions, the dumb things we do, and against demonic forces. Okay? I, I, I want you to know that. Now, keep in mind, it's not Satan the one following you around. It's more likely one of his little homies, all right? One of his little minions, that he possibly has assigned to you. Now, that's just buddy. I'm not, that's not biblical. But what I'm saying is, the closer we grow to the Lord, the more that you stop doing the things of the world and you concentrate on what God has asked you to do, studying the Bible, putting into action, telling others about Christ, the more things can sometimes happen to you. Now, again, sometimes it's just happenstance. Sometimes that's just life, all right? And a lot of times that's just the results of your dumb decisions. Mine too, I'm, I'm right there with you, that we make. But we've got to realize that angels were created, they are created beings by God, all right? They are created by God. Now, they are also called, quote unquote, spirit beings, okay? Spirit beings. Yes, sometimes they do take the shape of, of what we're used to as far as manly people go, manly men, all right, if you will, um, we're going to get into some of the names here in just a minute, but they are spirit beings, all right? They typically have no physical nature to speak of. Now, yes, the Bible does describe angels in a lot of different ways. We're going to talk about that too, but for the most part, they are there to do things, jobs, if you will, for God. He created them. They are created. Now, let me give you some scripture. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 7, and on this particular one, I'm reading out of the King James Version Bible, all right? Now, if you're turning there, I'm going to tell you a little story. So many of us like to get involved that if it's not King James, it's not the Bible, all right? Now, now again, as long as you can understand it and you know what's going on, I'm cool with it. It doesn't matter. But what I want you to understand and realize is that Jesus and the disciples did not preach out of the King James Version Bible, okay? They did not have the Bible back then. This was put together, and why am I saying that? If you get bored tonight after we get done during study, don't do it while we're doing it, all right? But if you get bored afterwards, I want you to Google, it's called the Demon Log, Demon Log. Now, King James is the one who actually wrote it. And it talks about demons, it talks about spirits, it talks about mediums, it talks about all these different things. And it was actually a thesis paper that he wrote prior to combining all, right, all the various books of the Bible and putting them together to the King James Version. 
All right? So I want you to understand the Bible under holy inspiration by God. Okay? Remember, all the books of the Bible were inspired by God. Now, do I believe they were inspired when King James uh, put them together? Yes, I believe so. Now, again, different denominations add to those. We're going to talk about that in just a minute tonight as well. Uh, they're called uh, extra biblical or, or uh, the canonical part portions that are not non canonical. There it is. Uh, are not part of our King James Version Bible. And, and then see what you have. You've got the King James, the these, the thous, the this, and that. And then they took it and they made modern translations from it. Sometimes the words are a little different. And, and you know this, that I quote it differently because sometimes, as much as I love the New Living and others, it doesn't give it the same impact that the King James does. All right? So I do go back and forth between typically the New Living and the King James. Just because that's what we're used to. I know growing up, that's what we had. That's what I studied and memorized. Um, but again, if you get bored, put that together. But I, I just want to make that point that, that the King James Version Bible was put together by King James and some people that he assigned to weigh those out. And the reason how they put that together was because they believed that the books that were chosen are the most authentic. And as we go on, and we delve into it, and we discover more things. That was put together in like 1590s. As we go on, we've discover, discovered other things. So keep that in mind. All right, so let's get back to our scripture. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 7, King James says this, And of the angels he saith, who maketh his angels spirits, here we go, spirit means, and his ministers a flame of fire. What does that mean? All right, you know, to be honest with you, God deals a lot of things with fire. Why? That's a his question. I don't know. But we know that uh, Paul here, when writing to the Hebrews, is actually quoting from Psalm 41. So it not only is in the Bible once in the Old Testament, it's also mentioned again in the New Testament. Angels are spirit beings, okay? Sometimes they do take on the shape of men, all right? And sometimes they can look pretty funky, all right? If you go to like Revelation and some of the, uh, the prophetic books, Daniel and Ezekiel, they have different eyes and heads and all these different things. Here's what I want to get at. We don't have to be scared of angels. There's nothing scary about angels. Anything that God has put together and uses is not scary. I've had people say, well, I'm going to be scared when I get to go to heaven because I see these angels that minister around God and they've got four different heads and all this other stuff. I said, don't worry about it. Remember, we're going to be in heaven. There's nothing scary when we get there. All right. Okay. So who made angels? Well, we talked about that a second ago. God did. All right. And you know this verse, you don't even have to, to look it up. Genesis 1.1, New Living says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Most commentators agree that that is when angels were created, was at this point, all right? They were at this point. Now, keep in mind, God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit always were. They were there. God did not create Jesus. God did not create the Holy Spirit. They were always there together. John tells us that, all right? In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, all right? We were familiar with this. But however, God did create angels before the seventh day, because what did God do on the seventh day? He rested, all right? Let me give you another scripture, Genesis chapter 2 and verse 1. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 1. So the creation of the heavens and the earth and everything in them was completed, all right? Everything. Angels were not made afterwards, all right? They, everything was made, and how it was made, I don't know. That's God's business, okay? That's one of those things that we wonder, but does it really matter? No, not at all. All right, now a question that was asked uh, a while back, and um, I didn't really have the answer on the top of my head. It was during a Wednesday night Bible study, and, and if you're familiar with this, or if you've never visited on a Wednesday night, uh, we do it very open. It's very open forum. If you've got a question, raise your hand. We do our best to answer them, and then we come back to them. Sometimes on the fly, I'm not very good, just to be honest with you. Uh, sometimes I get lucky, though, all right, and I can answer some of the questions. But some of them you've got to dig into. And as I was preparing for today, uh, I come across this, and it answers this question perfectly. And it, well, let me say this. It gives scriptural backup to my answer when it was asked, all right? So do angels have free will? Do angels have free will? Now, what is free will? Free will is the ability to say, yep, God, I'm going to obey you, or nope, God, I'm going to go this way. You and I 
have free will. We have free will, not even as Christians, as Christians we do, but even not as Christians, we have free will. You see, it's our choice to accept Christ as our Savior. It's our choice to do what God would have us to do. That is free will. So angels have free will as well. Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, what about the ones that fell with Satan? We're going to get to that in just a second. Remember this. Anytime Jesus calls anything holy, it means they are perfect and perfected and will not sin. Okay? Hang with me here. Luke chapter 6, or excuse me, Luke chapter 9 and verse 26. Luke chapter 9 and verse 26. If you're going to turn there, remember it's in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And we're going to be in chapter 9 and verse 26. 9 and 26. I'm going to turn there with you so we're going to be on the same page. Luke chapter 9 and verse 26. Now, if you have a red letter edition, this is Jesus talking. Keep this in mind. This is very important. Luke chapter 9 and verse 26. If anyone is ashamed of me and my message, the Son of Man will be ashamed of that person when he returns in his glory, in the glory of the Father and the holy angels. Okay? Now, remember, anytime Jesus says anything is holy, that means they are holy. It's perfected. The angels that are left in heaven are holy angels. They are perfect. They are not in midst of, or, or in concern of uh, turning from God and uh, from being lured away. You see, when, when God made all the angels, when he made them all, he made them for a specific purpose. Okay? He made angels for a specific purpose. Dr. David Jeremiah states as follows, angels are messengers, ministers, warriors, and worshipers. I'm going to repeat that messengers, ministers, warriors, and worshipers. You ever thought about a- angels that way? You ever thought about angels being a warrior? Angels being a worshiper, a minister, a messenger? Maybe you have. Maybe you haven't. Looks like we've got a question. Good job. Lara asks, is a demon able to turn into an angel serving God? Turn back to a uh, an angel? Is a demon able to turn into an angel serving God? No, I do not believe so. And this is me. This is Buddy talking. First Opinions 1-1. One, one. No, because they have been cast out from heaven. They, right? Remember, they were cast out of heaven, and therefore they, in my opinion, cannot go back. They made that choice to follow Satan. All right? Now, Satan has a specific purpose with them later on, and, and you know this. Uh, we went through Revelation a few times now. Uh, Satan has a specific purpose for his demons. And Larry, that's a great question. And I'm going to get ahead of myself, but I'm going to go there. Think of Satan as this. Remember, we all know he was an angel, right? God created angels. When he cast them out, Satan and his followers, one-third of all the angels... We're cast out. We're going to get to that scripture here in a minute. When he casts them out, they're no longer considered angels. They're considered what? Demons. If angels are messengers, ministers, warriors, and worshipers, angels to God, demons are going to be the same way to Satan. You see how that works? Now, one more thing that I believe God gave to me uh, today as I was preparing. Did you ever think about Satan being the chief demon? He is. Satan is the chief of all the, de- of all the demons. He was the chief. He was the most beautiful angel, right? He was kicked down. He thought he was better. He thought he was all that in a bag of chips, right? And then he was cast down to earth. Now he is the chief demon. And he and his forces and his demonic force are ministers, messengers, warriors, and worshipers of Satan. I mean, to me, like I said, I believe God gave that to me, and I was like, all right, that makes sense. It was one of my aha moments, okay? I never really thought of it that way. So angels have certain jobs, okay? They have certain jobs or certain duties. Now, I don't even have to ask this. I know we we know where we're going, and... uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask it anyways. Are there guardian angels? Do we believe that we have a guardian angel out there? 
I'd love to hear your opinion on that. And again, it's not a right or wrong. It's just an opinion. Do you believe we all have a guardian angel? All right. Just uh, something out there I wanted to throw out there. But we do know this. We do know that angels protect God's children. Angels protect God's children, Christ followers. He, they protect us. Psalm 91, 11 says this, for he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. That's the New Living Translation, Psalm 91, 11. For he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. Pretty awesome, isn't it? Let me give you another one, Matthew chapter 4 and verse 6. And I'm going to look it up with you, all right? We're going to do this together. I'm, I could cheat, but I, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to cheat. I'm going to be with you. Matthew chapter 4, Matthew chapter 4 and verse 6. Now, contextually, keep in mind, this is the temptation of Jesus. This is Satan testing Jesus, our Messiah. This is him testing him, Matthew chapter 4 and verse 6. And Satan said, well, let me back up to five. Then the devil took him to the holy city, Jerusalem, to the highest point of the temple, and said, if you are the son of God, jump off. For the scriptures say he will order his angels to protect you, and they will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. You see, Satan even knows what the angels are for because he was one of them. And Satan knows the Bible very, very, very well. So remember that. Yes, ma'am, we have a question. Tamara asks, do the demons believe that Satan will pre prevail over God? And then why would they follow Satan having known God? You know, that is a great question. That is a great question. Now, the simple answer is pride. The simple answer is Satan is a deceiver. We're going to get into that in just a minute. Um, I believe Satan is very conceiving. Let, let, let me give you an example. So I was talking to Chili the other day, and uh, we was texting back and forth, and he told me the name of this movie, and, it, and, and I highly recommend it, all right? It's called Greater. It's on Netflix. There's like one really bad word in there, and it's not that bad, but um, the way they, and I don't want to give too much away about it, but the gist of it is this gentleman lost a family member, and as he's contemplating why God would do or take this man away because he was a man of God and why he would take him away it, it, it shows Satan as another man just having a conversation with him and the conversation Satan was having with the man was on point, it was truthful but what it was most importantly was misleading you see Satan is the great deceiver, Satan wants to take what God gives us as our foundation to stand on and he twists it and, and he manipulates it around to where we start doubting God. We start wondering about these things. And, and that's why biblical knowledge is so important. That we study, study, study our Bible and that we know these things. Because I know you've been tempted just like I have many, many times. Like I said, I think it was last Wednesday or Sunday, you know. Satan's like that, uh, that Snoopy character that in, in the Red Baron that comes out and he just hits you in your mind with all these crazy thoughts, and especially when we uh, are in times of trial and wondering. He, he likes to cast that doubt to us and say, you know, what? why is that? Satan truly is the best deceiver out there. So to answer that question, and hopefully I did, it, it, I believe Satan was very convincing to the one-third of angels that, you know what, man, we, we can overthrow God. We, we can do this, right? Come on, follow me. We're going to be great. Now, again, supposition, let's go there. If Satan did have that conversation with the other demons and said, we can be great, and they were cast down on, here on earth, are demons powerful? You bet. Can demons do things? Absolutely they do. But there's nothing more powerful than God. And you, as his children, Satan and his demons have no hold over you whatsoever. Never lose sight of that, okay? Never, ever, ever lose sight of that fact. We give Satan and his demons way too much credit, right? Okay, scary movies. 
We all like to be scared sometimes, right? I don't like them because I have nightmares. Have since I was a kid. I'm just being honest, all right? I'm 46 years old, and, and if I watch a scary movie, I'll typically have a nightmare, especially if it's something to do with the demonic. I just, the way I am. Um, but we like those scary movies, right? They trip us out. We wonder, right? All these different things. Do demons possess dolls, right? Think of the movie Annabelle. You've seen it advertised. Can demons possess those things? Can they? Let me ask you this question. Let's just be real. Why would a demonic force want to inhabit an inanimate object? What's the point for that? What's the point of that? To bring terror? Maybe. Again, I don't want to get too ahead of myself, but, but we, again, I believe most of the things that we experience and we discover are our imagination. You ever watched a real scary movie that all of a sudden you're afraid to go to the bathroom? Or is that just me? <laughs> you, you watch a scary movie and, and then you got to cuddle up to, well, I have to cuddle up to my wife real tight, you know, because I'm scared, right? I'm just being real. I, I mean, I do not like watching that stuff because I, I just don't like it. But now I'm going to say this. That was when I was younger. As I mature and I grow, I know that those things don't apply to me today. So I, I want to be careful here, okay? That's, I, I come from that place, and, uh, and, and I, as I grow in the Lord, I become stronger because I know we give Satan too much credit. He wants us to be scared, all right? All right, let's shut that down. But uh, hopefully that makes sense, Tamara. Great, great question. I, I, I think that's really good. Now, another thing, another job, if you will, that angels do, they carry messages to humans. They carry messages to humans. Think about it. You know where I'm going. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 20. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 20. We read about it about every Christmas, okay? If it's gonna, and, and you just have to go back one. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 20. As he considered this, right? Now keep in mind, this is Joseph, all right? An angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. All right? That angel delivered what? A message to Joseph. Angels deliver messages. Let me give you another one. Daniel. Daniel chapter 9. Now, this is going to be in the Old Testament. Daniel chapter 9. And we're going to read verse 20. You just want to go back like three books and you're going to be there. Daniel chapter 9, and we're going to read verses 20 through 22. Daniel chapter 9, 20 through 22 says this. I went on praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people. This is Daniel talking. Pleading with the Lord my God for Jerusalem, his holy mountain. As I was praying, Gabriel, it should be a whom I had seen in the earlier vision, came swiftly to me at the time of the evening sacrifice. Keep in mind, it's roughly 3 o'clock in the afternoon. He explained to me, Daniel, I have come here to give you an insight and an understanding. What is that angel doing? He's delivering Daniel a message. He's delivering him a message. Now, another thing angels do, and I don't know how this works, okay? They are actually going to sift the good and the bad in the end times. I didn't write it, but we're going to read it, okay? So now turn back over to Matthew chapter 13. We're going to read verses 40 through 43. Matthew chapter 13, 40 through 43. So do, do you, are you getting the point of why angels are so important to God? Can, can God do all this stuff himself? Sure. I mean, he can do anything. He's God, right? But angels work for us as far as for our good. They are God's gift to us to help us to do the things they do God's bidding. Do, do you see how that works? I, I mean, they are there for a reason, and, and they're very special. And way more special than what we can even imagine. Remember, we've got these itty-bitty brains, and we're trying to figure out something that's super huge. So Matthew chapter 13, 40 through 43. 
Just as the weeds are sorted out and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of this world. The Son of Man will send his angels, okay, and they will remove from his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. And the angels will throw them into the fiery furnace, and where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in their Father's kingdom. Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. Remember, we talked about that many, many times. Anytime Jesus say this, says this, this is Jesus speaking. Anytime he says, anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. He's wanting us to know. He's wanting us to understand this. All right? In the end times, angelic forces are going to send, right, the bad things of the world to hell, where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. Remember, weeping is crying, gnashing is... Uh, you're, you're bit down. You're just so much in pain that you're just gnashing your teeth. All right? Now, again, how that works, I don't know, but that's a job for some of the angels. All right? Matthew 13, 40 through 43. Hopefully, you understand that and, and, and you get that. They are going to do these different things. Next, angels praise God. And I think from a human point of view, we can all agree with that. That makes perfect sense. We worship God during church services. We worship God as we drive. We worship God before we go to sleep. We worship God anytime and every time we thank him for something, we're worshiping him. Anytime and every time we give an offering or a tithe, we're worshiping. Every time we raise our hands, we are worshiping. Every time we say amen, we are worshiping. Do you see how it's all worship and that we shouldn't be afraid to do anything when it comes to worshiping God? If, if I'm preaching or someone else is preaching and you agree with something, there is nothing wrong with you saying amen. There is nothing wrong with you getting out of your comfort zone a little bit and kind of loosen up, right? We got to loosen up and get ready to worship. It's worship. Now, we're not going to run around. We're not going to bark like dogs. We're not going to climb over the pews. We're not going to do anything crazy. But, man, we can worship God. And we can do a better job of it, all right? We can do a way better job as a church. When we come back and we start fellowshipping, we can do a better job of worshiping God. Because our point in reading Scripture, our point in everything we do as a combined church service is to do what? Worship God. You see how that works? It's, it's, it's all about Him. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's about Him. All right, Psalm 148. Psalm 148. Take your Bible, split it in the middle. You'll be right there at Psalms 148. Psalm 148. And we're going to read verse 2. And I pray as we go along, and, and if you're taking notes or if I'm talking too fast, um, please let me know. I can slow down. Uh, we can take as long or as quick as we need to do to go through some of the stuff. I, I'm not hearing any questions, so come on. I'm either one or two things are happening. You've either muted me, paused me, or you're not paying attention. <laughs> All right, let's get these questions coming. Come on now. We got a few more weeks of this, and then we're going to get back to the old us. Psalm 148 and verse 2. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all the armies of heaven. I'm going to keep going. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you twinkling stars. Praise him, skies above. Praise him, vapors high above the clouds. Let every created thing give praise to the Lord. For he issued his command and they came into being. He set them in place forever and ever. His decree will never be revoked. Do you see how we should worship God everything we do. If the angels do it, do you realize there's angels in heaven and they surround the throne? I, this, is, this is just me. I'm coming off my, my um, study here. They surround the throne and all they do is worship God 24-7. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. That's all they do. Now, I know you're like me. I know I'm not some weirdo. I mean, I know I'm a weirdo, but, uh, but I know I just don't feel like this sometimes. There are some times when I'm studying the Bible or I'm driving or whatever I'm doing, I just feel like, man, God, you're right there. And, and man, you just feel that closeness and it's everything you can do. And you just start thanking God. Man, you're worshiping right there. That is what you're doing. When you were like, man, God, thank you. Thank you for my stimulus check. 
right? You got a stimulus check, you better thank God for it, right? It came from him. All these different things that we get, right, that are just blessings. Man, thank him for that. Thank him for the air you breathe every day. Thank him for the steps you get to take. Thank him for, I mean, just absolutely everything. That's worshiping, that's praising him because that's what we're gonna do in heaven, believe it or not. We are gonna worship God all the time. That euphoric feeling that you feel, Right? Sometimes when you're in that closeness with God, that's what you're going to feel 24 7. That is going to be what heaven is. It's going to be amazing and awesome. Next, angels do whatever God commands, they do whatever He says, anything. Psalm 103, turn back. Go to Psalm 103. In verse 20. Psalm 103 in verse 20. And there's a point to all this. I, I, I promise you, it's, it, we're, we're going to get to it. I'm not just doing this to look cute. Psalm 103 and verse 20. Praise the Lord, you angels, you mighty ones who carry out his plans, listening for each of his commands. Yes, praise the Lord, you, army of, you armies of angels who serve him and do his will. Praise the Lord, everything he has created, everything in all his kingdom. Let all that I am praise the Lord. When is the last thing, last time, last thing, when's the last whatever that you said, let everything I am praise you? You ever think about that for just a second? Let everything I am praise you. And that's, that's deep. And if you dive into that, do you realize every breath we take is a gift? Every day that we get to close our eyes and go to sleep is a gift. Do you thank him for that? Do you praise him for those things? All right. So, so now let's go back to what do angels look like? I think we all wonder about that, right? Are they good looking? I mean, you know, are they different things? Do they look like Keanu Reeves? Do they look like, you know, all these actors that have portrayed uh, uh, angels? I, I don't know. But we do know many times they look like a man. Sometimes there are these far out things with the wheels and the foreheads. And, and you know what? That's God's business. All right. So they're not scary. They're not scary. So turn to Daniel chapter 10. Daniel chapter 10. And it's pretty interesting. Did you find it? Did you beat me? I'm talking to myself again, Chris. We need some people here, don't we? I'll start blessing your food again if you don't watch it. We did that last week, and we'll do it again this week. Daniel chapter 10. Hey, you know what? I, I love to have fun. I, I love you all. I love the fact that you're watching. Preferably, I'm not boring you too much, but this is good stuff. We've got to know these things. Daniel chapter 10, and we're going to read verses 5 and 6. I looked up and saw a man dressed in linen clothing with a belt of pure gold around his waist. His body looked like a precious gem. His, eye, his face flashed like lightning and his eyes flamed like torches. His arms and feet shone like polished stone and his voice roared like a vast multitude of people. Now, verse 6 describes the awe of the angel. Okay? Verse 5 simply says, I looked up and... It, certain man clothed in linen. This was a man that was dressed probably like in a tunic, all right? Um, would an angel today rock vans and jeans? I don't know, all right? But uh, back then, they look like another man, all right? So they look, most of the time, they look like men. Now, women, don't get mad at me, but I don't know of any women angels in heaven, okay? Um, I'm married to an earthly angel, my wife. Uh, yeah, she's, uh, she's acting with her tongue like, like blah, blah, whatever. But uh, no, we, we know that angels typically look like men, all right? Now, we mentioned this. We kind of brazed over the top of it. Do we have guardian angels? Do we have guardian angels? And that's a very good debated question. Do we have it? We have two verses in Scripture that we kind of get the clue that maybe we do. Now, we just read one. Okay, a little bit ago, that kind of clues us into it. But the one we really want to drill in on is Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18. Now, I don't know if you realize this or not, but you know, Jesus really loved kids. You should know that. 
Jesus really loved kids. They were very, very special to Jesus. And as you're turning there, I'm going to tell you another series to watch if you're still sheltering in place or bored or whatever. It's called The Chosen. It's actually on YouTube, completely free. If you have Pure Flix, it's on Pure Flix. Um, although not historically, um, or let me say this, theologically the most accurate, historically and to the time, dead on. And they've got one that says, uh, that, that is basically Jesus and talking to the children. And it's pretty amazing. It shows his love for the kids. And I'm using my hand and Christy's making fun of me right now because apparently I'm Italian <laughs> or part of it. All right, Matthew chapter 18 and verse 10. Or wait a minute. Yeah, Matthew 18, verse 10. See, I'm a slower turner than you are. Again, this is Jesus talking. If you have the red letter edition, beware that you don't look down on any of these little ones. He's talking about children. For I tell you that in heaven, their angels are always in the presence of my heavenly Father. Their angels are always in the presence of my heavenly Father. That's one that many commentators believe or, or, or can assume that, yes, we have Guardian angels. Let me give you another one. Hebrews, just a few chapters up. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. You've got Acts. Romans. You're going to get to Hebrews. Now, this is a letter written by Paul, of course. And it says something along the same lines. Okay? Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 14. Therefore, angels are only servants, okay? Meaning of God. Spirits sent to care for people who inherit salvation, okay? Again, it's a hotly debated uh, subject. In the scheme of things, does it matter? No, all right? But for those that gain security by that, uh, you know, we possibly could have a guardian angel. I mean, there's, it's hard to, to dispute um, these two accounts, all right? Now, again, that's God's business, all right? But just don't get so caught up in, in some of the stuff that when it comes right down to it, doesn't matter, all right? Ultimately, what matters is Christ and him crucified and us telling others about him and us doing the best we can to get as many other people that we can come to heaven. But again, this, this study session is to, to give you an insight of what the Bible says compared to what Hollywood and TV and everything else says, all right? Now, this one, now so far, Vicky's got a $10 gift card coming, all right? This is where the feedback portion comes, and we've only got like 12 minutes left, all right? So wake up, unmute me, unpause me, all right? Let's go, all right. Okay, good, good. We got a question coming through. All right, so in the Bible, in the Bible, what two names of angels are listed? In the Bible. Okay, next. $5 gift card. And Vicki, if, if you get it, that, that's amazing. All right. All right, Lara uh, said, would an angel tell us that they are angels like they do in Touched by the Angel? Oh, that's, that's so good. You know, um, again, great questions, Lara. I, I, I love your questions, and, and they're amazing. Um, you know, there's the scripture in the Bible where it says, you know, basically we could be careful because we entertain angels. Um, I think possibly they could if that's what God wants them to do. Um, I think sometimes we do entertain angels when we help people um, that we'll never know about. Um, and and that's, that's the cool thing. And, and I, I think about this sometimes is, you know, my, my ultimate goal in life and the whole purpose why I serve the Lord is when I stand before Jesus' feet, all I want him to say is, well done, my good and faithful servant. If I hear that, I've done everything that I've ever wanted here on earth. I, I mean, if I can hear my Savior say that to me. And I was talking with my chaplain candidates uh, the other day. Um, I said, you know, I can't wait for us to get back together in heaven and we can talk about and see the lives that we touch through what we do. And the reason why I say that is because I believe that those things will be revealed to us when we do get to heaven. I believe the times that we did entertain angels, that we'll know about it. Uh, I, I believe that we'll be fully aware 
of all the times that, you know, maybe we helped that person buy groceries and maybe it was an angel sent to see what we would do in that situation. All right, and, and, and that's God's business, again. But, but I believe when we get to heaven, we're going to be able to see the vastness of uh, where our circle of influence reach people. And, and I just, I, I think it's amazing. And I'm going to say this, I can't wait to gather around with you all in this church and uh, talk about the people that we've touched and being able to, uh, to just witness to and, and, and bring others with us. I, I believe we, if we are doing our job as Christ followers, we're going to touch people that we never thought we'd touch and we'd plant and water seeds that maybe we never thought um, we reached somebody. So good stuff when, we're, when we get to go to heaven. And, and again, this is all part of heaven. And as Randy always says, the older I get, the more um, heaven's closer for me. And for many of us, it could be here in just a minute. It could be, you know, 20 years from now. So good stuff. Uh, all right. So did anybody guess the two names? So Drew was first in with Michael and Gabriel. He's the winner. All right. We did have Vicky come in and say, do you mean types of angels or names? Just names. And I told her for bonus, she could tell us the types. Okay. So um, that'll work. She has not done that yet. Uh, but we do have somebody coming in with archangels. All right, yes. And then Dave uh, came in with Gabriel and Mike Fraker. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. All right. I, I never knew Michael had a last name. Now we do. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. That's awesome. <laughs> and then Drew came in with cherubim and Farabin. Angels. Types of angels. Cherubim. Yep, that's yep. one. The, the other one? Farabin. P-H-E-R-I-B-U-N. And actually, that was Sydney. Okay. <laughs> All right. I know Sydney's on it. All right. Good. Good. All right. So Drew is the winner. Of yes. Five. Five whole dollars. F- potentially ten for yes. the types. Okay. Okay. So now, yes, number one. And I think Dave should get a bonus for his humor. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Michael Fraker. I love it. All right. <laughs> That's good. All right. So do angels have names? Absolutely. Collectively, yes. And personally, yes. Okay, now we're, I'm going to throw something out there. Man, we're running out of time. We always do that. All right, so we know that the sons of God, right, collectively, okay, uh, are also referred to as angels. And that's found in Job chapter 1 and verse 6. Job chapter 1 and verse 6. Job is the Old Testament. And many, a uh, little trivia as you're turning there, many believe Job was the very first book written under inspiration, it's supposed to be the oldest book there. And, and I'm going to be honest with you, Job is one of those books where I like the beginning and the end, the middle, the bantering, going back and forth is a little tough, but there's some meat in there that you can really skim off of that. Um, but Job chapter 1 and verse 6, now this is out of the King James Version, okay? It says this, now there was a day when the sons of God came to pre- present themselves before the Lord and Satan came also among them, okay? Let that simmer for a minute. Now, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. Satan, fallen angel, came among the sons of God, okay? Let that marinate, and we'll, we'll kind of touch on that if we have time here in just a second. Gabriel, all right? Gabriel, we know Gabriel is an angel, right? Now, Gabriel is typically thought of as God's chief messenger or announcer for God. Most of the times when we read uh, about Gabriel delivering or doing something for the Lord, he is doing what? He's delivering a message or, or he's announcing something for the Lord. And we can go to Daniel chapter 8. Daniel chapter 8, and we're going to read verses 15 through 27, or excuse me, 15, yeah, through 27. And, and it's pretty interesting when you get in there and, and you see what takes place. Well, I'd never win a speed contest looking by verses up, would I? Ha <laughs> ha. Daniel chapter 8, 15 through 27 says this, As I, Daniel, 
was trying to understand the meaning of this vision, someone who looked like a man, here we go, another clue, stood in front of me. And I heard a human voice calling out from the Uli River, Gabriel, tell this man the meaning of his vision. As Gabriel approached the place where I was standing, I became so terrified that I fell with my face to the ground. Son of man, he said, you must understand. Now, again, he's not calling him an angel, all right? He, he's just, we are the sons and daughters of man, all right? Keep in mind, you must understand that the events you have seen in your vision relate to the time of the end. When he was speaking, I fainted and lay there with my face to the ground because Gabriel roused me with a touch and helped me to my feet. Then he said, I am here to tell you what will happen later in the time of wrath. What you have seen pertains to the very end of time. The two-horned ram represents the kings of Media and Persia. The shaggy male goat represents the king of Greece. And the large horn between his eyes represent the first king of the Greek empire. The four prominent horns that replace the one large horn shows that the Greek empire will break into four kingdoms, but none as great as the first. And at the end of the rule, when their sin is at its height, a fierce king, a master of intrigue, will rise to power. He will become very strong, but not by his own power. He will cause a shocking amount of destruction and succeed in everything he does. He will destroy powerful leaders and devastate the holy people. He will be a master of deception and will become arrogant. He will destroy many without warning. He will even take on the prince of princes in battle. He will be bro but he will be broken, though not by human power. This vision about the 2300 evenings and mornings is true, but none of these things will happen for a long time. So keep this vision a secret. Then I, Daniel, was overcome and lay sick for several days. Afterward, I got up and performed my duties for the king, but I was greatly troubled by the vision and could not understand it. Do you see the message that Gabriel gave him? Many times, and you've been through Revelation study, this is a scripture we go to. This is talking about the end, end times. And, and I love the fact that Daniel is is real and he's open and he says, man, I was terrified. Let me say this. There's nothing in heaven to be terrified about. However, when we see the holiness, when we see the awesomeness, that is God. It would likely terrify us in our fleshly selves because he is so holy. He is so whatever. I mean, if we could just, if God would just part the heavens for just a minute and give us a glimpse into his holiness, it would change our whole attitude. We wouldn't use God's name in vain. We'd hurry up and read our Bibles. We'd hurry up and we'd tell others. I mean, God is holy. And then Daniel being that close to something so holy, it made him sick for a couple days. Now, when he's talking about going back to his services as a king, keep in mind, he was a Munich. He served, the, a eunuch, excuse me, a Munich. I think that's in Germany. <laughs> he was a eunuch, all right? So Gabriel appears in both the Old Testament and the New. Now, I'm going to just, we won't go here, but it's Luke chapter 1, verse 5, and Luke chapter 1, verse 26 through 56. What I'm getting at is, remember, Gabriel is the one to announce to Mary that she's going to carry the Son of Man, okay? That's what he's getting at. Gabriel is the chief messenger, all right? We got enough time to do Michael, all right? Let's talk about him. Michael Fraker, right? Mike Fraker, all right? He is known as the archangel, or archangel, excuse me. He is the chief angel, right? He holds rank, all right? Being in the military, when, when you see someone come out and they've got a, a star on their chest, all right, that means they've got rank or whatever. He is the top dog as far as angels go. He is an archangel, all right? Now, Jude chapter 1 and verse 9 qualifies this, and I'm just going to read it. I'm going to cheat, all right? You don't have to look it up because we've got like two minutes. Yet Michael, the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses. Durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, the Lord rebuke thee. All right? The Lord rebuke thee. All right? You've heard me say this many, many times. Satan has no power over us. Okay? Keep that in mind. We give him too much power. However, we've got to be careful sometimes when... Um, What am I trying to say? I want to, I want to say this correctly. Satan is powerful, yes. I've heard people and I've heard pastors, 
you know, taunt Satan and taunt uh, demonic forces and, and taunt these things. Um, nowhere in the Bible is it exampled that this is good behavior. Let me say it that way. Jesus didn't taunt Satan. What did he do? He used scripture. Get behind me. Take a hike. All right, he didn't say it, take a hike, but that was the gist of it. Get behind me. Michael, the archangel, even though he was in a dispute, right, about where the body of Moses was. You think about that? I mean, we could, we could do delve on that for a long time. So he's in this conversation with Satan, and he finally gets to a point. He just says, I rebuke thee. Just walking away. God help you, right? So, so there, again, there is a fine balance that we've got to, um, to figure that out, okay? Again, you know me. I'm probably right in the middle when it comes to so many different things. Uh, I'm not too far one way or the other. But, um, yeah, so ah, we ran out of time. But lots of good stuff. Uh, we're going to keep going on this. Next week, we'll get into the, de the demons. We'll get into the demonic a little bit. Again, I don't want to spend too much time on there, but I do want to talk about it because I believe it is intriguing for us. We're going to talk about mediums, all right? We're going to talk about psychics, all right? Um, some of those. So I want us to get your thinking caps on, and, and I want you to be thinking about those things, all right? Are they of God? Should we get our palms red, right? Should we... Uh, call 1-800, you know, whatever, all right? There's all these different things, and I want you to think about that, and I want some of these questions to come back at you, all right? I, I want you to think about that. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we love you and we praise you, God. We're just so blessed to be able to gather together via video screen, Lord. We're just, we love you so much. God, this Sunday is Mother's Day, and I ask that you bless all the mothers out there. Father, may they just love you. May they just love you so much, and may you just bless them in every way. I ask, God, that you just open the floodgates of blessings upon this church, Lord, uh, upon your people. Father, but may we do what we're supposed to do. May we tell others about your son, Jesus. May we study and put into action, God, what you have for us. Father, if anybody is getting ready to eat or maybe they're eating, I ask that you bless their food. I'm going to be so thankful, God, to have people back in front of me in these uh, pews so we can get some interaction, God. I'm just so looking forward to Sunday. Lord, we ask that you be with those that are, are fighting sickness or, or affliction in any way. We ask that you be with those um, that have suffered a loss, and, and we just uh, we lift them up to you. Lord, we lift up MJ's brother to you who possibly has uh, the coronavirus, who's going to get tested. We continue to lift up John to you as he continues to recover from his throat surgery. Lord, we, we, we lift up Norma and her family to you with her deceased uh, niece that just happened suddenly. God, all the different things and the ones I'm missing. Lord, we have people that are being persecuted that um, are, are trying to set the world straight that I had a prayer request come into this afternoon. Father, you know exactly what's on our hearts. You know exactly what we need. Lord, in faith, we're gonna thank you for the good things. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Y'all be blessed. Come back Sunday if you can. Now, again, if you don't feel comfortable, no worries. We are not going to throw shade or judge you for that. Just uh, make sure you come if you can. God bless you. Have a great night and uh, go with God.